small shop owner has bid in the Santa or in any right bazaar. It is your pen, okay? Most type of plastics are known as thermosetting plastics. Comparison, there are three types. Up, down, right, left. I am not inferior to anyone. We are Clara. We are top on the hour. Congratulations. I want to be a leader. A warm good afternoon to everyone. My name is P. Shaila Kumari Swero, studying in 10th standard at Kamadhanam in Mahabubnagar district. Today, I am going to teach you a topic from Bioscience. Before going to the topic, let me know, what do we need to do work? Yes, energy. Where do we get energy from? You are right. We get energy by taking nutritious food. Here, we are taking the food through our digestive system and we are getting energy throughout the body. How is it possible? That means it is digested in the digestive system, supplied to other places and being distributed to all parts of the body. Then can we call this as transportation? Yes. In our general life, we will be observing that the goods are produced at one place and they are supplied to different places by a means or process called transportation. Transportation through waterways, airways, roadways, etc. Do we find this type of transportation in all living organisms? No, because in our living world, there are some unicellular organisms. Unicellular means single cell organisms and also multicellular organisms. Can there be any separate transport system in unicellular organisms? No, there is no separate transport system in unicellular organisms. That's why there is a simple physical and physiological process called diffusion. It's called as diffusion for the distribution of all the materials needed by the cells and to transport the materials needed by the cell and to eliminate the waste material from the body cell. Then what is diffusion? Diffusion means the movement of particles from higher concentration to lower concentration. Let us see with an example. See here, I have taken some water in a beaker and these are the KMNO4 crystals. I drop the crystals into the water. Observe the movement of particles in water. Tell me, can we observe this movement of particles for too long? No, because we can observe this movement of particles from the higher concentration to lower concentration till the whole water come to an equilibrium state like this. This is how the process of diffusion occurs in unicellular organisms like amoeba. Whereas in multicellular organisms with the increase in the complexity of cells like us, there is a necessity to bring out structural and functional changes in the evolutionary process to accommodate a system to transport the material needed by the cells and to eliminate the waste material from the body cells. Otherwise, with trillions of cells in higher animals, the bulk movement of materials would take years by the process diffusion. So here, we came to know that a separate specialized system is essential for our body to transport the material much faster and more efficiently and also to avoid a delay to carry out the process much faster and more efficiently. 
So, that separate transport system is called circulatory system. So, today my topic is circulatory system. Why it is called as circulatory system? Means it circulates the material throughout the body continuously. This circulatory system consists of heart, blood vessels and blood. Heart. Heart is one of the body's marvels. See here, this is a model of the heart and this is the real goat, real heart of a goat. The structure of the heart can be studied as external and internal. Let us know about the external structure of heart briefly before going to the internal structure. See here, the heart is a muscular pulsating organ. located in the mediastinum and it is protected by the rib gauge. The heart is of the size of the clinched fist. If you observe here, it is in pear shaped, triangle in outline, wider at the anterior end and narrower towards the posterior end. And the muscles of the heart are called as cardiac muscles, called as cardiac muscles and the heart is enclosed by a double layer pericardium. Let us know about this pericardium. The pericardium is divided into two layers, outer epicardium and middle serous layer. This is fibrous layer and this is the serous layer. This serous layer is divided into two layers. Outer parietal layer, inner visceral layer. This parietal layer is fused with the fibrous layer of the pericardium. Whereas this visceral layer adds to the heart wall. Means it is fused with the heart wall. And the space between these two layers is filled with the pericardial fluid. And what is the significance of this fluid? It means this fluid reduces friction and allows free movement of the heart. And the pericardium protects the heart from external shocks. First suppose this is a heart. Now I am hitting the heart. What happened? The pain, the beat is received directly by this heart. So it may damage. First suppose this is the double layered pericardium along with the fluid enclose the heart. Again I am hitting the heart. What happened? The pain, the shock, the beat is received by this pericardium. So here the heart is protected. In the same way the pericardium along with the pericardial fluid protects the heart from external shocks. This is about the pericardium. Now, just now I have told you that the visceral layer of the pericardium is fused with the wall of the heart. The wall of the heart is divided into three layers. Outer epicardium, middle myocardium and inner endocardium. This is, these are the three walls of, three layers of the wall. Now, if you observe here, on the heart wall, we found two deep grooves, one horizontal and one vertical. What do these two grooves indicate? That means, for suppose this is a groove. When we see it internally, we found two small room like structures, one and two. In the same way, these two grooves indicate that the heart is internally divided into four chambers. How many chambers? four chambers. Two smaller upper chambers called atria or auricles and two larger lower chambers called ventricles. These are the four chambers of heart. 
and if you observe here this horizontal groove is called as coronary sulcus this horizontal groove is called coronary sulcus and the blood vessels on the heart wall are called coronary vessels this is about this external structure let's once again see here this is the external structure of a heart heart is located in the mediastinum and it is protected by the rib cage the heart is covered by a double layered pericardium and the heart walls are called made up of cardiac muscles and the heart wall is of three layers epicardium myocardium and endocardium we also learned about the heart is divided into four chambers and about coronary vessels the vessels which supply blood to the heart wall are called coronary vessels now let us know about the internal structure of heart we know that the heart is divided into how many chambers four chambers two upper chambers called auricles and two larger lower chambers called ventricles this is the right atrium this is the left atrium this is the right ventricle and this is the left ventricle these four chambers of the heart internally separated by septae one horizontal and one vertical the two auricles namely right auricle and left auricle are separated by a septum called interauricular septum see here this is the right atrium this is the left atrium these two atrium are separated by a septum called interauricular septum inter means in between similarly the two ventricles are separated by a septum called interventricular septum this is the right ventricle this is the left ventricle the two ventricles are separated by a septum called interventricular septum and the two auricles and the two ventricles are separated by a transverse groove called atrioventricular groove see here this is the atrioventricular groove and we found two openings in this atrioventricular groove one on the right side and the other on the left side these this is the atrioventricular groove and there are two openings in this atrioventricular groove one on the right side the other on the left side these openings are called as atrioventricular apertures these apertures are nothing but the valves see here between the right atrium and right ventricle there is a valve called tricuspid valve it is tricuspid because there are three flap like structures one two and three so it is called as tricuspid and this valve between left atrium and left ventricle is called bicuspid valve because it has two flap like structures one and two and it is also called mitral valve the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve combinedly called as atrioventricular valve because they are situated on the atrioventricular septum and the two auricles of the heart are primary receivers of blood the deoxygenated blood from superior and inferior vena cava oxygenated blood from lungs through pulmonary veins and the two ventricles of the heart are actually the pumping chambers of the heart from the right ventricle an artery arises called as pulmonary artery this is the pulmonary artery and at the origin of this pulmonary artery there is a valve called pulmonary valve 
and this pulmonary artery carries the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. This pulmonary valve is also called as systemic aorta and here this is the pulmonary valve. Similarly, from the left ventricle another artery arises called as aorta or systemic aorta. At the origin of this systemic aorta is also there is a valve. It is called as systemic valve or aortic valve. These two valves namely pulmonary valve and aortic valve combinedly called as atrioventricular valve. These are called as semilunar valves because they are in half moon shaped. If you observe carefully the wall of the ventricles is thicker than the wall of the auricles. Similarly, among these ventricles, the wall of the left ventricle is thicker than the wall of the right ventricle. This is about the parts of the heart. Let's once again see here. The heart is divided into four chambers, two atrium and two ventricles. The two ventricles are separated by a septum. It is called as interventricular septum. And we also find four valves in the heart. Two are called atrioventricular valves and two are called semilunar valves. We also learned about different parts of the internal structure of heart. This is about the internal structure. Now let us move to the blood vessels. Blood vessels are mainly of two types. Arteries and veins. See here this is an artery and this is a vein. You can also see here. This is an artery and this is a vein. Arteries are bright red in color and they are deep seated in the body. Whereas the veins are blue, dark red in color. We are usually see them as blue color and they are superficial. Arteries carry oxygenated blood from the heart to the body parts. But just now we have discussed that from the right ventricle an artery arises which carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs, right? Though this is an artery which carries deoxygenated blood, it is actually an artery. See here, it is actually an artery. So, all the arteries carry oxygenated blood except the pulmonary artery. And in the same way, all veins carry deoxygenated blood except the pulmonary veins. And do you know what is lumen? Lumen means the gap through which the blood flows. If you observe here, the lumen in the arteries is small and the same lumen in veins is wider. The blood in the arteries flows with more pressure. So the wall of the artery is thick and elastic in nature. Whereas the blood in the veins flows slowly, steadily slowly. So the wall of the vein, vein is thin. Do you know that the veins have valves? But arteries do not have valves. So the veins, uh, arteries are called as non-valvular. And the fact that our veins do not, uh, veins have the valves is discovered by a great scientist called Girolamo Fabrici in the year 1574. The year 1574. The ending points of the arteries and the starting points of the veins are called capillaries. If suppose this is an artery, it is divided into two. Again it is redivided. Again it is redivided. Means this will become the small branches of this artery. So the small branches of arteries are called arterioles and the small branches of veins are called venules. 
and the capillaries are a type of blood vessels which carries the materials to the tissues and cells of our body do you know that if we join the capillaries of our body end by end it can wrap the world twice and the smallest capillaries were discovered by a scientist named marcello malfighi in the year 1661 in latin capillaries means finest hair so they are called as capillaries and diffusion takes place mostly in capillaries this is about the blood vessels then tell me what flows in the blood vessels the blood will flows in the blood vessels the blood is a fluid connective tissue our body contains nearly 4 to 6 liters of blood let's see here the blood vessels are of three types arteries veins and capillaries this is the structure of an artery if you see the lumen is narrow in artery and the wall is thick and elastic in nature compared to the lumen of the vein the lumen in the vein is wider and the wall is very thin he is giro girolamo fabrici who has discovered that the veins have valves and we learned that about the ending points of the arteries and the starting points of the veins are called capillaries and in the capillaries mostly the diffusion takes place he is marcello malfighi who has discovered the that the microscopic capillaries and i also told that blood flows in the blood vessels of blood is mostly of water and body contains nearly 4 to 6 liters of blood blood composition is water red blood cells plasma white blood cells and platelets this is about the heart blood vessels and blood now have you ever observed a doctor holding the wrist of the patient a doctor holding the wrist of the patient and observing his watch for a minute what does the what does he trying to find out by keeping his artery uh, by keeping his hand at the hand where the artery goes into the hand that means can we also feel that yes when we keep our index and middle finger near the wrist we can feel the pressure of blood moving in the artery rhythmically up and down then what is this rhythm it is the pulse the pulse is the pressure with which the blood is moving in the artery means here what is happening in the artery the artery is supplying the blood who pumps which pumps the artery blood into the arteries yes the heart will pumps the blood into the arteries so let us see how the heart receives the blood and pumps the blood into the arteries it is also called as the functioning of heart let us see here to pump the blood the heart has to contract and relax the contraction and relaxation of the atria and ventricles is called as one cardiac cycle called as one cardiac cycle the contraction phase of the heart is called systole and the relaxation phase of the heart is called diastole and for the contractions and relaxation of the heart the cardiac muscles of the heart are responsible and this cardiac cycle consists of three stages namely auricular systole ventricular systole and cardiac diastole this cardiac diastole is nothing but it is also called as ventricular diastole and also joint diastole stage to begin with all the four chambers of the heart are in relaxed state then 
the deoxygenated blood from the superior and inferior vena cava collected in the right atrium and the oxygenated blood from the lungs through pulmonary veins collected in the left atrium once the two atriums enter have the blood filled then these two atria start contracting it is called as auricular systole when the when they start contracting here a pressure is created which which pushes the atrioventricular valves to open then blood from the auricles flows to the ventricles once the blood from the auricles flows into the ventricles the atrioventricular valves closes immediately because to prevent the backflow of blood from the ventricles to the auricles here what is the duty of this atrioventricular valves means they shed the blood into the ventricles they shed the blood into the ventricles once the blood is filled in the ventricles these two auricles start relaxing when the ventricles start contracting a pressure is created here which pushes the eight the artery the semilunar valves of the pulmonary artery and aorta to open and blood enters from the ventricles into the arteries once the blood enters from the ventricles to the arteries the semilunar valve closes when the atrioventricular valves closes we listen to the first sharp sound of the heart lab and when the semilunar valves closes we listen to the second dull sound of the heart dub once again the four valves the four rooms of the four chambers of the heart are in relaxed state this is called as cardiac diastole and when the ventricles start contracting it is called ventricular systole like this once again the blood is collected in the arteries and they are ready to pump the blood into the ventricles this sequential events occurring the heart occurring in the heart which is cyclically repeated are called cardiac cycle are called cardiac cycle and just now i have told you that the heart when the ventricular means when the valves of the heart closes we listen to the heart lab and dub what is this lab dub this lab dub is nothing but the heartbeat and the human heartbeat is 72 times per minute and also to complete one cardiac cycle it takes near approximately 0.8 seconds and you know that the pulse rate will be equal to the number of heartbeats so here now we know about the cardiac cycle let's see here once again the cardiac cycle consists of three stages auricular systole when the auricles contract ventricular systole when the ventricles contract and ventricular diastole or cardiac diastole when the four chambers of the heart are in relaxed state see here tell me can we hear the lab dub sound of the heart yes we can hear the lab dub sound of the heart it is nothing but the the sound which is produced by the heart we can hear that sound by using an instrument named stethoscope this is the stethoscope which is discovered by the rene lenac a scientist before the invention of the stethoscope people used to hear the heartbeat by keeping their ear at the chest see here when we keep this two stethoscope near the heart we listen to the sound lab this is the sound which is produced by the heart lab and dub and if you see we have learned about the cardiac cycle and here he is rene lenac who has discovered this stethoscope and see here before his invention also people used to hear the heartbeat but he never stopped that he never stopped that it will be satisfied he has